After the defeat of Golden Frieza, Kale and Vegeta were back on Beerus' planet so that they could continue training with Whis, back on Earth. Since Gohan asked 18 and Piccolo to train him again, she took them to the Sacred World of the Kai to train with her. Regardless, back with the Saiyans, Whis had them wear gravity suits and do 50,000 push-ups. Chompa and Vlados were traveling through space, but they finally landed on Beerus' planet, which woke up Beerus. He thought this was the Saiyans that woke him up, so he started to attack them. In his rampage, Beerus almost attacks Chompa, which leads to the two bickering with each other. While while they argue, since Vlados noticed the Saiyans didn't know who this was, she explains to them who Champa is. Regardless, when Beerus asked why he was there, Champa said it was because he believes his universe has more delicious food than Beerus's. After giving them an egg to try, Beerus has Whis make instant ramen, which Champa and Vlados found delicious. After Beerus explained this food came from Earth, he has Vlados look for the Universe 6's Earth, but she reveals it was destroyed by its inhabitants. After mocking Champa, the two gods of destruction got in a fight, but Whis and Vlados stopped them so the universes weren't destroyed. So, Chompa Chompa suggested a 5 on 5 tournament between the two universes, and the winner would get the Earth. Beerus says this would be impossible, but Chompa reveals he has been collecting the Super Dragon Balls that would be able to make this happen. Beerus would ask the two Saiyans' opinions on this tournament, which they would agree to it, since they were curious to see fighters from the other universes. Chompa then decides the tournament will be on the Nameless Planet since it is a neutral space between the two universes. Beerus leaves it to Chompa to get the planet ready, while they then decide on the rules for the tournament. As usual, if they surrender that person loses, they can't kill, if they fall out of the ring they're eliminated, weapons and enhancements aren't allowed, and the fighters have to pass a simple test. Both Gods of Destruction agree on these rules, and they then say the tournament will be in one week. Beerus and Whis then take Kale and Vegeta to Earth, and once there, they go and see Bulma. She suggests they use the Dragon Balls to ask Shenron where the other Super Dragon Ball is, so they gather the Earth's Dragon Balls. Back with Chompa and Vlados, they arrive at the Nameless Planet and give it an atmosphere, an arena, concessions, viewing stands, and portraits of the Gods of Destruction. Back with the heroes, when they summon Shenron, he can't find the last Super Dragon Ball, so Bulma goes to make a radar for them. Beerus and Whis are prepared to leave to go get Monaco, which is when he explained to Kale and Vegeta that Monaka is the strongest fighter in Universe 7. Back with Bulma, after getting help from Tice to find Jacko, she has Kale test out the Super Dragon radar. Kale and Vegeta then met up with Krillin, who was told they were going on a picnic in space, so they explain to him what is actually happening. They then try to decide on the other two members of the team, which they suggest Gohan and Piccolo. The Vegeta says Gohan is too rusty because of his constant studying, so Kale suggests 18 is dead since she's been training with Piccolo. Vegeta agrees on recruiting 18, so they go to the Sacred World of the Kai, since she, Gohan, and Piccolo were there. Gohan considered joining, but he had a conference to go to that day, so they do recruit 18 and Piccolo. After returning to Earth, Kale and Vegeta decided to go into the hyperbolic time chamber and train for three years. While they did that, 18 and Piccolo would continue their training with the Supreme Kais. Meanwhile, Beerus finishes his ramen, so he and Whis take off to go and recruit Monaka. After Jacko arrives on Earth, he and Bulma head to Zuno to ask him about the Super Dragon Balls. After Jacko apprehends Gepu Man and Bulma accidentally wastes two of her questions, they do learn that the Super Dragon Balls are scattered across both Universe 6 and 7. They then return to Earth and share this information with Vegeta, so they figure Chompa has been coming to Universe 7 to steal the Super Dragon Balls. Regardless, Jacko then says he'd like to watch this tournament, as he then departs to his headquarters to hand over Gepu Man. Back with Kale and Vegeta, they discuss what type of fighters they think they'll see, but they go back to training shortly afterwards. When the time to go to the tournament came, Whis arrived with a cube to transport everyone. Jacko then showed up with the Galactic King, which doesn't amaze Bulma since she met others like the Supreme Kai's and God of Destruction. Kale and Vegeta then arrive, but they go shower and Vegeta shaves before they leave. They then arrive at Beerus' planet, which is when Beerus and Monaka get in the cube too. Unlike what Goku did, Kale wouldn't attack Monaka out of nowhere. Once they arrive, the Vados was going to show the guests to their seats, but Whis created new ones since the current seats look hard. While on the way to do the test, Kale greets the Universe 6 of Supreme Kai. Fuwa, but she greets him respectively instead of casually like Goku did. Once they arrive, Kappa approaches them, wondering if they are Saiyans. After saying that they are, he reveals that he is a Saiyan as well. Kappa then mentions that the Saiyans of Universe 6 still live on planet Sadala, so Vegeta explains what happened to that planet in Universe 7. Regardless, Vlados then goes over the test, which all the Universe 7 fighters pass. When deciding the order of the fighters, Beerus says Monaka will go last since he is the strongest. So, the others play rock, paper, scissors, which ends up with Kale going first. This means the first match is between Vitalmo and Kale, as they both enter the ring. Vitalmo started with bouncing wildly around the arena, as he then landed a strong punch on Kale. Vitalmo would then start firing key blasts at her, but she manages to evade all of them. Kale then jumped behind him and used a resist blast, 
but he came out unscathed. She then goes on the offensive of punching Matano, but her attacks are doing nothing to him. He then pushes her back, so Vegeta shouts for her to use her head. She then grabs his legs, which forces him to fall. As she drags him to the edge of the arena, he was firing mouth blasts at her, but she dodged them as he then stood up and tried to punch her. However, she caught his arm and threw him out of the ring, making her the winner of the first match. Chamba started to throw a tantrum, but Vados told him to calm down. They still have four fighters left. Regardless, Frostin enters the ring and politely introduces himself to Kale when the second match begins. Frost uses his speed to throw Kale off balance. Kale then suggests that he should go into his final form right away, so Frost complies, but he goes into his second form instead. Since Kale has seen Freeze's other forms in the past, she still thinks Frost is hiding something. The two begin to fight and are evenly matched, though Kale calls him out for hiding his other form shortly afterwards. She then turns into her regular Super Saiyan form. Chompa asks Kaba if all Saiyans can do this, but he knows nothing about it. She suggests that Frost should turn into his final form, which shocks him that she knew he was hiding it, but he complies. They then begin to fight, but Frost is completely outmatched, though he refused to surrender. He threw another punch at her, and even though she blocked it, she started to feel tired suddenly. Frost then knocked her out of the ring, making him the winner of the second match. 18 ran over and checked on Kale, as she was worried she was dead, but she eventually wakes up, so she was briefly unaware where she was and that she lost. Frost then checked to see if she was alright and congratulated her for giving him a fun match. Chompa then taunts Beerus for Kale losing, which angers him, but he laughs it off after Whis gets him to calm down. The referee then announces that the third match is between Frost and Piccolo. When he asks Kale if he has a chance, she says he does, so she would know what he unlocked in his training with the Supreme Kai's. Piccolo then enters the ring and takes off his weighted clothing. Meanwhile, Jacko moves next to Vegeta to get a closer look at the fight. Frost charges Piccolo right away, but he dodges him against the charge of Special Beam Cannon. So, Frost starts firing blasts at Piccolo, but he evades him as well. However, when he starts firing the special beam cannons, Frost was dodging them. He then tries getting closer to fire his blast, which is when Frost's key blast pierces his leg. So, he makes clones of himself, which causes Frost to shoot at them to try and find the real Piccolo. He eventually knocks all the clones out and charges at Piccolo, though he manages to block his punches. At this range, he can't use the special beam cannon, and Frost's punches and kicks were damaging him, though he eventually manages to knock Piccolo away, which causes him to lose his stored up energy. He then extends his arm and grabs a hold of Frost, as he starts to charge the special beam cannon again, though so Frost then lifts his arm into Piccolo's, and as he was going to fire the special beam cannon, he became dizzy. Frost then blasts Piccolo through the abdomen, which when he shoots his blast, it pierces the barrier. When Frost is declared the winner, Jacko objects and asks the referee to check Frost's arm for a needle. Chompa threatened to destroy Jacko if there wasn't one, so he must back down from this, but Beerus and Vegeta insisted that the referee should check his arm. He finds the poison needle, and Frost tries to say it's biological, but the referee says it looks artificial. The referee then disqualifies Frost and declares Piccolo the winner. Balderton explains that this was Frost's true nature, as he's the leader of the Space Pirates. Frost then revealed that he starts wars and buys the Ravage land had a cheaper price afterwards, so that he made a large profit from them. Even though Vegeta would have liked to fight Frost, that would mean both Piccolo and 18 would have to drop out, which he wouldn't want to put themselves to that much of a disadvantage. However, since he knows Piccolo is hiding something, he would ask for Frost to be reinstated into the matches. Piccolo would agree, which when he and Frost enter the ring again, he says that Piccolo must be confident to take him on again. This is when Piccolo says he was hiding a transformation of his own, which confuses Frost. Regardless, before they begin the match, Frost says he will use tricks in his poison needle, which the referee allows after getting Beerus' and Chompa's thoughts. As soon as the match starts, since Piccolo is being cautious this time, he decides to show off his transformation right away. When he trained with the Supreme Kai's, he had his potential unlocked, which gave him access to his ultimate form, so he would turn into that form as Frost then charges at him. Piccolo then hits him in a sense of flying, which breaks through the barrier, though Vados prepares it, since Frost is now eliminated. Beerus looks over Kale for an injury caused by Frost, which is when he finds out she was poisoned, so she's reinstated into the tournament. Chompa then makes a rule that if someone touches the barrier, it counts as a ring out, which angers Beerus as he didn't give his consent. Frost is leaving the tournament grounds and found Chompa's cube, but Hit found him and stopped him from taking it. Anyway, the fourth match is between Automageddon and Piccolo, so he grabs his lava and enters the ring. He then drinks his lava, and the match begins, so he tries going after Piccolo. He can't hit Piccolo, but he was also able to withstand the attacks of Piccolo. When he tries using a key barrage, Automageddon counters it with his lava saliva. Over time, it was getting hotter in the barrier, which was having a worse effect on Piccolo than it did on Vegeta. The Mechians only need water to survive, so by making Piccolo sweat out the water, he was also losing nutrients and energy, so the longer their fight goes on, the more energy Piccolo loses. His attacks already weren't doing anything, so they definitely weren't doing anything now. Eventually, he would drop out of his ultimate form, which allows Automageddon to beat him down even more. Piccolo would then be forced back to the point that he is knocked into the barrier, thus eliminating him. A peanut enters the ring, as the fifth match is between her and Automageddon. If she seen that Piccolo was forced into his ultimate form, she would go into her ultimate form right away. 
since it's already hot in the barrier, she would start sweating, but she has limitless energy, so she doesn't have to worry about getting weaker like Piccolo did. Anyway, the amount of oxygen would be getting lower in the arena, so she would realize she needs to finish this battle fast. They would get into a beam struggle, but her beam was overpowered, though she managed to dodge his lava spit, and then hardened into a rock club, which he almost knocked her out of the ring with. Eventually, they would get into another beam struggle, but as she uses her full power, Automageddon is seemingly overpowered, like how Vegeta did. She insults him, which causes him to fall out of the ring as it collapsed beneath his weight. This makes 18 the winner, but we send mentions that she didn't have to go that far, as metal men are extremely sensitive. Regardless, Cabot then stepped up the fight, but Vegeta would ask 18 to come to the sidelines to talk briefly. Vegeta wanted to fight Kaba, and since he mentioned not being able to go Super Saiyan earlier, Vegeta knows that Kaba would lose against 18. So, like how he convinced Piccolo to forfeit so he could fight Frost in the original timeline, he would convince 18 to surrender so he could fight Kaba. After she leaves the ring, Vegeta would enter it, which means the Six matches between him and Kaba. As the match begins, they would go blow for blow at first, up until Vegeta tells him to get serious. Vegeta then turned into a Super Saiyan, which Kaba didn't know how to do and asked Vegeta to teach him. This angered him, so he started to assault Kaba to the point that he tries to surrender. He then threatened to blow up Planet Sadala if he surrendered, which was enough to anger Kaba and cause him to transform into a Super Saiyan. Kaba then launches his own assault on Vegeta and seemingly overwhelms him, but he eventually takes one of his attacks unharmed. He tells Kaba not to forget this feeling, which confuses him as he reverses his base form. Vegeta explains that this form was only achieved through anger, but he then turns into a Super Saiyan Blue and knocks him unconscious. After he wakes up Kaba, he has him promise to show Vegeta the planet Sadala someday. Regardless, Hit then enters the ring, as the seventh match is between Vegeta and Hit. This match will go the exact same, with Vegeta going into his Super Saiyan Blue form right away. During the fight, Vegeta didn't land a hit, and there was a moment he couldn't see Hit's movements right before he was attacked. After being pummeled, Vegeta eventually tries to land a hard blow on Hit, but he lands a hard blow on Vegeta's gut. This knocks him out, so the others go to help him and Krillin gives him a sensu bean. On the sidelines, the Galactic King wonders if he was using the time skip ability, so Jacko explains what this ability is to Kale. The eighth match is in between Hit and Kale, so she enters the ring. The Earth tried to get Whis to tell her how to overcome this technique, but he said it would be good training for her and mockingly said that they still have Monaka. This is when Piccolo overhears that Monaka's strength was made up just to motivate the Saiyans. Regardless, when their fight begins, Kale tries attacking through a series of trial and error. Eventually, she would manage to block some of his attacks and even land hits on him, as she was predicting his movements after the one tenth of a second time skip. When she turns into her Super Saiyan Blue form, she gains the upper hand over Hit, as he got aggravated since he was reaching his limit. Though, she's eventually hit hard by him, as he mentions that he was able to grow his time skip to one fifth of a second because of her. She couldn't predict his movements anymore, so she had to resort to a technique she planned to use against Beerus. Her current Super Saiyan Blue form was just using the power of her regular Super Saiyan, so in her free time, she tried to combine the power of her legendary Super Saiyan form with the Super Saiyan God form. She would turn into her legendary Super Saiyan Blue form, which the power of this form would likely be above what Goku's Kaioken times 10 on top of Blue was, since her power would continue to grow the more she adapts to her opponent's strength. She would then use a resist blast against Hit as he tries time skipping through it, which causes an explosion. This form wouldn't drain her stamina as much as the Kaioken did to Goku, so she would be able to put up a better fight for longer. As the fight goes on, she would notice that Hit isn't able to use his full power because of the rules. The sense of gods of destruction couldn't agree on dropping all of the rules, she would hop out of the ring because it wasn't a fair fight. Even though she doesn't normally like to fight, facing someone like Hit excited her, as they both kept pushing each other's power to new heights. She then drops to her base for him, and since she was tired, 18 helped her back to the stands. The ninth match is between Hit and Monaka, so he tries to jump into the ring but fails and falls. Hit realizes he is weak, but after the match begins, he pretends to be hurt and sends himself flying when Monaka punches him. So, Monaka is declared the winner, which also makes Universe 7 the winner of the tournament. Kelvin thanked the Galactic King for help, as she made the same mistake Goku did of not shaking his hand, and angered Chompa was going to destroy his universe's team, but he is interrupted when Vados tells him Xeno arrived. Xeno mentioned that he was originally there to tell off Beerus and Chompa for hosting this tournament, but he found it interesting, so he decided he wanted to host a tournament between all of the universes. Unlike Goku, Kale wanted to approach Xeno, so Xeno then takes his leave. Afterwards, Chompa and the Universe 6 fighters leave, as the heroes realize the 7th Super Dragon Ball is the planet they are on. So, they then got into the cube, and we summoned Super Shenron. While the wish was left unknown to the heroes, Beerus wished for Universe 6's Earth to be restored back to normal. Bulma tried asking what he wished for, but he lied to her and said that he wished for a more comfortable bed. Regardless, in another part of space, Vlados informed Chompa what Beerus wished for, which caused him to have a mixed reaction. Whisen took Beerus and Monaka to Beerus' planet, as he then departed with the heroes to Earth. Monaka is then revealed to be a mailman, as Beerus gives him money for his help in motivating the Saiyans. Back on Earth, everyone returns home, much to Kale's delight. Thank you.